I'm going to focus on the Rangers in, uh, they are hosting the Penguins, the Penguins plus 120, the Rangers minus 140, over under six and a half, a rarity for me. I think that the Rangers have some value here. I wouldn't hate doing like a minus one and a half here at plus 165 or the money line, but for tracking purposes, I'll put it in uh, at minus uh, the minus one and a half plus 165, because I think that this game sets up to be pretty high event with the way Pittsburgh has been playing. Their defensive numbers haven't been great basically for the lion's share of the season, but they are creating scoring chances and the Rangers defensive numbers lately, especially with Ryan Lindgren out have been pretty poor. That said, if that is how this game goes, I think that the, it suits the Rangers. The goaltending edge will be in the Rangers' favor as long as it's Shesterkin, which I have no reason to believe it's not. And the Penguins, they're either going to go with Tristan Jari, who is in absolutely terrible form, or more likely go with Casey DeSmith, whose numbers are decent, but we know what Casey DeSmith's level is as a, as a goaltender. So the Rangers will have an edge there. And the icing on the cake here is that the Penguins' defense – will likely be without Jeff Petrie. It will likely be without Jan Ruta, and it will almost certainly be without, well, it will be without Dmitry Kulikov. None of those three are needle movers on their own, I don't think, at this point in their career, but given the context of the team they play for, the Penguins who lack depth over there already and don't have, outside of Latang like a true top pair defenseman to go with them, it's, it's basically a defense by committee and when you're taking away three bodies three regular nhl decent at their role players uh and then calling up three others to to, to step in it's tough and lastly like the nick bonino move that i thought was okay like a, i'm not saying it was a great you know shrewd move but we talked a lot about their bottom six and at least gives them uh another nhl body there he's out too so this penguins team is just decimated at the bottom of the roster right now and the rangers should be able to create enough scoring chances i believe to get the separation to cover the puck line so actually like the minus one and a half plus 165 nice yeah i I think you're kind of making the same case i thought versus washington where it's just you know even strength play might be 50 50 but i think they're holding a lot of the edges outside of that and it does kind of seem like some of those guys are starting to really find their form and and feel pretty good about their games outside of that, you know, Fox Mikola pairing, which is something special right now. And the other one, I think, could be an interesting narrative to consider um, Shisterkin saves over. I could see this being like relatively open, fairly high event. Maybe New York gets some leads, Pittsburgh's pushing. I, I know in that playoff series, they were peppering a lot of shots on goal. And I think there could be a lot of game scripts where that that kind of support that bet. So I think that's definitely a number where like I'll watch and see where it opens um, and consider that. Yeah, it also feels like a game, considering they just played and it got a little nasty, we could see some power plays, uh, you know, for both sides uh, or the refs having like a pretty tight whistle to start just to like cool things off. And that would also, I think, favor uh, the Rangers as well. Um, all right. Now on to yours, a late night special out on the West Coast. Yes, I'm going to go with the Kraken to win in regulation versus San Jose. They're in the midst of a three-game losing streak. I don't think it's been as bad as that sounds. And it just seems like a really good get-right spot for me for a team that's desperate to break through going to the postseason. I don't think they'll blow it in San Jose too often. I like the way this matchup looks. And San Jose, of all the like bottom feeders right now, has arguably looked the worst. Like they're really pushing hard to get down to dead last They're Now, if Columbus were to win one of the games in hand, they're in dead last. So, and it seems like all the things that were kind of going on early on, the wheels have just fallen off. So especially if Kakanen's in, I think this is a really good play. Uh, It seems like some of the veterans that kind of were into it early on are checking out a little bit. Um, I like William Eklund, and I think Zetterlund's decent, but it still just seems like there's not enough moving the rope for me here. So I think Seattle's just going to be hungry. They're going to play with four lines that can win a lot of shifts, and I think it's a good spot to go with them here. And to talk about that Sharks-Flue Jackets game that was prop gold. Every good... I posted a bunch, and then I was like, okay, I better stop. Like, I don't want people to think I'm an <laughs> idiot here. But I also was looking at that game. I was like, this, is, this has got to be such a good spot for both of these. And then uh, 
like all the ones I didn't post even hit because it was just such a defensive mess from both, especially San Jose. I don't even really know how they got it tied up, but it was it was pretty ugly. And then I loved the overtime winner of like a 200 foot two on O not going in the net after Goudreau and Johnny or Goudreau and Line overpass. And then it just bangs behind the net and they still score anyways. Yeah. And it was just the most like Columbus San Jose ending to that game. I was just, I loved that highlight when I saw it. Yeah, that was a beautiful game. 